Hey friends, it's Anna. Welcome to my August plan with me. If you're a fellow Swifty, I think you're really going to like this one, or if you just appreciate a good bottle of wine. I got my inspiration for this theme from Taylor Swift's song, August, specifically the line that goes, August slipped away like a bottle of wine. And from that little sentence, this whole theme was born. So I'm starting off with a cover page for the month where I'm going to write out that lyric. I actually don't typically do quote pages. I use my calendar page as kind of my cover page for the month just to keep my setups time friendly and really functional. But I did really want to create this cover page for August so I could highlight the Taylor Swift lyric that inspired me. As you can see, I'm drawing a wine bottle horizontally with some wine spilling out. I really wanted the drawing to visually represent the wine and the month slipping away like the lyric goes. And I kept the drawing pretty minimal, so I think this is beginner friendly to any artists out there, and it should also be a good setup if you're looking for something quick too. I used some parchment paper to represent the label of the wine, and that's where I'm going to write our title using my Tombow Calligraphy brush pen. If you're curious about any of the supplies I'm using, those will all be linked below in the description box, as always. For the color on these spreads, I'm using some markers from my Crayola Colors of the World set. You might remember these from my March setup. I absolutely love these markers. The tones are all very warm and cozy, and I love how they show up a little translucent on the page if you only use one layer. I like to have my colors be a little bit more subtle in my journal. I'm using the color Deep Rose for the wine, and I'll use the color Light Golden for the bottle. I know that red wine bottles are typically dark to protect the wine from light, but I just didn't think a dark bottle would look good here. So I took some artistic liberties and made the glass for the bottle into this off-white color, which I thought looked good with the rose. Honestly, the hardest part of these drawings was figuring out how to add the little details like reflections to the glass. Glass is hard to represent in art, whether it's a minimal drawing or a really detailed one. I used lots of reference photos and paintings to figure out where to do the reflections and how to add some detail lines to the glass. So as you can see, I left a little white strip in the wine to represent light reflecting off the bottle, and I also added some darker sections to the glass up top. Now I'm adding the rest of the Taylor Swift lyric from August using my alphabet stamp set. As you saw, I sketched with a pencil first the pattern I wanted the words to follow. I wanted the text in the quote to also feel like it was kind of slipping away. Again, just trying to represent that feeling from the lyric. And here is the final cover page for August. Next up, we have my calendar spread. I'm writing my title up top with my larger black Tombow brush pen, color N15. I have a pretty big calendar, so this will take up most of these two pages. Each day has a box that is 5x5 five five squares in my A5 notebook. I find this is enough room for my tiny handwriting to fit up to three events per day, and that's plenty of space for me because I mostly just write personal events on here. I'm stamping the days of the week up top, and I accidentally stamped the T for Thursday upside down, so I'm using some white out and a white gel pen to fix that. Next, I'll go in with the light golden Crayola marker to create some little circles in the top right corner of each day. This is where I'll write the dates, so the marker just gives it a little color backdrop. And that's the calendar layout I use each month. To decorate this page, I'm going to add some more wine theme drawings in the margin. Starting off in the bottom right, I'm drawing a single glass of wine. 
I like to imagine this is a glass of Merlot because that's my favorite red wine. And again, I'm going to add a little reflection on the glass and leave that part white. I'm also going to draw some grapes around the bottom of the wine glass. I thought adding some grapevines and bunches of grapes would look so pretty and go great with this theme. To help balance out the page, I'm also going to add a little bunch of grapes on the left side, kind of like they're hanging off the top left corner of the calendar. Again, I'm going for a minimal drawing style. I love getting to include art in my monthly and weekly routine with these journal setups, but I also like to keep it simple and not do anything that's going to take me hours upon hours to create. I'm drawing some grapevine leaves up top, and a lot of grapevine inspiration drawings I looked at had these little curls coming off the branches, which I thought looked so cute and elegant, so I added one of those. I'm also doing a little shading in the edges of the grapes, just to keep this from looking too cartoonish. So one of the reasons I was so excited to create a Taylor Swift inspired theme is earlier this month I got to go to her Eras tour in Kansas City. I went to the July 7th concert which turned out to be the best night to go because that was the day that Speak Now Taylor's version came out. So we got to hear two extra songs from Speak Now. She played Long Live and Never Grow Up in addition to Enchanted. Long Live was one of my top songs from the whole concert and is probably one of my all-time top favorite Taylor Swift songs too, so getting to hear that live was a dream. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Taylor Swift song is because I would love to know. What was also really cool about the concert was she premiered her new I Can See You music video during the concert. So it played on the big screen and we all got to watch it for the first time. The video stars Joey King, Taylor Lautner, and Presley Cash, and they actually came on stage afterwards to say hi, which was so cool to see them as well. It was so funny though when we were watching the video because for the first minute or so, it was just showing Joey King. And then when Taylor Lautner dropped onto the screen, the screams that went through the crowd were so loud. Everybody absolutely freaked out and that was really fun. But yeah, the concert was amazing and I have even more respect for Taylor Swift than I did before if that's possible because you can tell she just put so much thought into everything about the show from the costumes to the props. It was all amazingly done. Getting back to bullet journaling though, I'm using those Crayola markers to color in the wine glass and grapes. I'm using the medium golden color for the leaves and I use the medium deep golden to outline the leaves and for the little curls. Overall, I really like how this calendar page turned out. Next up are my notes for August pages. This is a spread I came up with to help with planning my month besides just the events on my calendar, and it also gives me a place to reflect on the month as well. I wrote the title up top with my smaller calligraphy pen, and I'm drawing three boxes below. If you've been following along with me, you know what these are because I've been using this spread for a few months now. The top left box is for intentions. These aren't specific goals or tasks, but more like general focuses or priorities that can help me frame my month. Like for July, I remember two intentions I put were prioritizing exercise and meditation. I think for August, I might write something like focus on improving focus. I've been getting distracted really easily recently, so I want to be intentional about trying to improve my focus this month. Maybe I'll try a Pomodoro timer or techniques like that. If you all have any techniques that have really helped you focus, please let me know. This is really something I want to work on. The box below intentions is for tasks, so the specific things I want to check off my to-do list in August. And the box on the right page is for reflections, so I'll fill that out at the end of the month. I think these reflections are really helpful for choosing my intentions and tasks for the next month. Like I already know one of the things I'll probably write about in my July reflections is how I've been having trouble focusing, 
and reflecting on that is the first step to actually doing something about it. For the art on these pages, I'm drawing another wine bottle, pouring out some wine into this wine glass on the right page. I really like how this drawing has two distinct parts, the bottle and the glass on different pages, but the drawing is connected by the stream of wine, so it ties together the pages and creates a cohesive spread. I'm now adding the final touches with the color. I accidentally colored in the whole bottle with the light golden, so I did go back with the white gel pen to add the reflection. I'm overall really happy with the color palette for this theme. It's maybe a little more autumnal than summery, but I just love warm earth tones. Also, I thought it looked a little off that I originally didn't draw any wine in the bottle, so I went back with my rose marker to add that, and I think it looks a little more natural now. And here's how the final spread turned out. Next up, we have my monthly tracker spreads. We'll start off with the left page, which is for habits. I'm writing the title up top in a serif style font. I'm doing the outline first with the fine tip side of my black Tombow pen, and then I'll fill in the letters using my brush tip side. I've been using this habit tracker setup for pretty much all of 2023, and I really like it. I track pretty much the same habits every month because there are just some things that I always need reminders and motivation for, like drinking enough water. A new habit I've started tracking in 2023 is doing my morning routine because that's something I've been working on implementing consistently. I have my routine written out on my ideal day spread at the beginning of the journal, and I'll have an option to watch that video at the end if you're interested in seeing that setup. I'm still definitely working on doing this routine consistently, so that will probably be a habit I'll track for the foreseeable future. Another habit I've just recently added to these trackers is meditation, which is a practice I've always wanted to start, but especially since I've been struggling with focus, I'm hoping this will help me in that area. I really love how bullet journaling enables you to switch up the things you put in your trackers each month if you need to. As you can see, I drew little outlines of August five times. Each of these mini calendars is for the five habits I'll be tracking. I wrote the days of the week up top, and now I'm writing each habit below in a cursive font. These trackers are really simple. For each day of the month that I complete the habit, I put a little X in the corresponding day in the calendar. The only exception is for water. I write the number of ounces I drank each day in the calendar. Here, I'm adding my goals for each habit on the side, if I want to do it five times a week, just on weekdays, whatever it may be. For the art on this page, I wanted to incorporate some more grapevines, so I'm drawing a little bunch of grapes in the bottom right corner of the page, and I'll draw some leaves as well as the start of a vine that will trail off into the right page and will eventually connect the art on these two spreads. Again, I'm adding a little shading to the edges of the grapes to give them just a little detail and depth. And the last step to complete this habit tracker is adding a little bit of color. Just like I did with the wine bottle, I changed the color of the leaves to fit with the color palette I was going for. Normally, grapevines are green, of course, but I thought this almond color for the leaves would keep with the theme better and stick with this really warm palette. On the right page will be my mood tracker. I've been using the one line a day system for the past few months, which I've been really enjoying. It also makes for an extremely simple setup. I used to do the one color a day tracker where you assign moods to specific colors and then color in each day, but I really like how this version allows me a whole line to write whatever I want about my mood whether that's multiple moods, the time of day I was feeling that way, any context behind the mood. So as you can probably tell, I have a column for all of the days of the month, and on the right column, I have a line for each day where I can write all those details about my mood. 
I didn't show this on camera, but I also did make a color key at the bottom for common moods, and then at the end of the month, I go through and highlight those moods in their respective color. So I do get the benefits of the color system as well because I can quickly see any patterns with the common moods I've experienced. To decorate this page, I'm extending the grapevine that started with the grapes on the habit tracker. I really love this design of the grapes and vine. I'm definitely partial to drawing plants in nature, so I'm glad I got to include some leaves and vines in this wine theme. And that's it for my August trackers. Onto my weekly spread, the last pages of this setup. I've already written my title up top. The first week of August will be week 30 of the year, which is crazy that we've already made it this far into 2023. I'm dividing these pages in half because I use a whole half page column for each day of the week, so each weekly spread takes up four pages in my journal. The last column on the right is my rolling weekly task list where I write any tasks or goals that I want to get done during the week in general, but I don't have assigned to a specific day yet. As you'll see, I'll use a faux dutch door design so that this weekly list is visible no matter what day of the week I'm looking at. Whenever I'm filling out my rolling weekly, I usually separate it into a few sections as well. One section for YouTube, one for personal chores, and one for work if I have any project-based work tasks. I would say I mostly use my journal for personal things, but on my daily columns, I do use it to plan out my whole day, including both work and personal. And there you can see how the faux Dutch door works to keep the rolling weekly visible on each day. I stamp the days of the week at the top of each column and then underline them. I always forget to do this while filming, but I also usually stamp the dates for each day in the top right of each column. For the art on these pages, I'm doing both some wine and some grape designs. Starting at the bottom of my weekly column, I drew a little wine bottle there. And then to go across the bottom of the rest of the pages, I'm drawing a winding grapevine. I just love those little curly cues coming off the vine. I really feel like they add so much to the drawing. The grape leaves are kind of in an elephant ear shape and they're a little spiky on the edges. Now we're going to add some color. I do really like having a whole column for each day because it gives me enough space to add some art along the edges, but I still have plenty of room to write out whatever I need to. And for this wine bottle, I'm going to use that same parchment paper as I used in the cover page to do the label here as well. I couldn't really think of anything to write or draw on the label, so I just left it blank. But now that I'm looking at it, I should totally go back and write the number 13 on the label. Back to the first page of this weekly, I'm going to draw a little bunch of grapes to the left of the title and then I'll draw a grapevine trailing down the middle of the two pages and along the bottom of the right page. I sketched this out beforehand and the vine on the right page will match up with the end of the grapevine on the next page in the weekly too. So when the Dutch door is folded over, the drawings will connect to each other. You'll see what I mean when I do the flip through. Matching up the drawings on the pages gives me so much satisfaction. I ended up really liking how this weekly design turned out. I might just use the same one for the rest of the weeks in August. Usually I switch up the art of my weeklies just based on what ideas I have or how much time I have when I'm setting them up on Sunday. Towards the end of the month, sometimes I get really busy and I don't do any drawings at all and I'll just add some colors to the titles. But I do love getting to do a little bit of drawing and design each week if I make the time. I really hope you guys enjoyed this setup and thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow along for more bullet journal setups each month or reading journal content, feel free to subscribe and I'd love to have you join our little journaling community. Here's the final weekly spread, and you can see what I was talking about with the Dutch door. Let's do a final flip through to see the whole setup together. I really ended up loving the colors and overall aesthetic of this theme. I feel like I need to listen to the song August each morning when I'm planning in my journal to really complete the vibe. 
thank you guys again so much for watching and i hope you have a beautiful august and be sure to check out my overall setup for this journal or my reading journal setup if you want to take a peek at that journal too